Queen Catherine Parr is best known as the wife who survived, the one who talked her husband out of executing her. But she was also big patron of art and very into miniatures. Hence it is hugely annoying how few original portraits of her we have. Just three portraits in total. The rest are all copies, according to institutions who own them. And in my opinion one of them is Anne of Cleves, mistaken for Pa. For while we thought we only had miniature from Sudley Castle and full-length portrait by Master John in National Portrait Gallery. And you can't firmly tell the shape of nose or hair color out of either. Thus they weren't great help to identify more portraits of Pa. But then in 2023 miracle happened. The so-called Jersey portrait thought to be lost in fire in 1969 has re-emerged intact. It got sold at Sotheby's. And it turned out that it isn't another copy but second original painting by Master John. We can tell shape of nose from it very nicely. And straight away, there is huge resemblance to miniature thought to be Mary Howard. Hence I expect it shall be re-identified in nearby future and it will become our fourth original painting of power. All the differences can be accounted by different angle and tilt of head, different weight, different artists, and common issues within period portraits. And by different styling of hair or smile versus no smile. But before sorting Pa's coloring, I would like to point out this portrait is slightly discolored, bit too yellow. It's still usable but we have to take it into account, because yellowness can play tricks with colors. But even when the yellowness gets reduced digitally, the hair still stays golden. Certainly no light blonde, as in Swedish miniature. But darker shade of golden strawberry blonde. That is very tricky color to capture and even in undarkened portraits often it looks more like dark blonde. Only rarely it looks as light blonde probably due to pigments fading. However something going off with pigments in portrait wouldn't affect the real hair. Hence that platinum blonde lock circulating online has either been put into bleach or it is fake. While those strawberry blonde locks, despite not looking nearly as golden as in life, are likely true. Now moving on to the eye color. In these three portraits the eyes are gray. Normally I say that the grey eyes can be result of cheaper pigments being used for blue eyes. But not in this case. The NPG's portrait is created using the most expensive and rare pigments. And the eyes are still grey. But we have to look at this one too, even if it is discolored. Just take it with pinch of salt. Curiously, if we look at close up of the eyes, no matter how much the yellowness is reduced, the left eye has green tint and right eye is brown. But when the very same images are made smaller, the right eye stays same, but left eye seem to be grey or light brown. Hence three out of four go against heterochromia, but one would suggest hazel eyes. Those can change hue depending on light. The grey-brown variant was the most common in the family of Henry VIII and appears to be his type. But hazel eyes can also have grey-green-brown variant. Hence I am unsure what her eye color was. It could be grey or any of these hazel variants. But please be aware hazel eyes can sometimes in portraits look as dark grey or richly brown. Regarding skin color, mostly we see light white skin. But National Portrait Gallery portrait points to very fair skin, lighter than light white skin tone. Sadly. We have no period description of Pa which would go to specifics, but it said she had pleasing looks. Which fits nicely. This coloring combination fits period ideal and Henry's type. Thank you for watching.